Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about how to add parameters to the methods that we're designing, which is really important because it's going to make the methods that we're creating a lot more useful and a lot more flexible. So we're going to review our understanding of parameters. We're going to talk about uh, the difference between parameters and user input and how to identify which parameters you probably should be using in your methods. And we're going to talk about the syntax of parameters and lastly, and just as importantly, we're going to talk about the syntax for writing comments for your parameters so that they get documented correctly. Okay, so what's a parameter? We've talked about parameters in Chapter 2. We talked about how to use parameters to provide input to our method. And so that's the way that I usually like to think about parameters. They're the inputs that a method needs in order for it to work properly. Um, here's an example from algebra. If you say f of x equals 2x minus 4, then x is your parameter because you have to put a number in for x in order for the function to work properly. You can't just say, what is f? So it's important to understand, though, when we say parameters are input, a lot of times people get that confused with user input. Parameters are not input from the user. And in fact, I would say that you should probably try as much as possible to keep user input out of your methods. And the reason for that is that as soon as you put user input into your methods, then they only work in programs where you need that user input. Um, you've immediately made your method a lot less useful than if it could just run by itself using a parameter value. Even if you know that you're going to get that value from the user, it's a lot better to get the value in another part of your program and then pass it to your method using a parameter. Parameters make your methods much more flexible than just using user input, so keep that in mind. Now, as far as taking a look at a method and trying to figure out what its parameters should be, um, it's a challenge, especially when you first start designing classes. Um, a lot of times you can tell that you're in a situation where parameters should be helpful if you find yourself writing the same code over and over again. Um, if you find yourself copying and pasting a set of code in your program and then just changing the numbers, then you should have a red flag go off that says, hey, this is probably a place where I could take that code, put it in a method, and then just add a parameter in that place where the number is. And then the parameter would take care of um, filling itself in in those places where you're changing the number. Um, you can sometimes just look at a method and kind of naturally see what kind of inputs it needs. So, for example, if you were writing your own square root function, you need to square root a number. So the number should probably be the parameter. Uh, another way is to try a little role play. Pretend you are an object of the class that you're designing, and you're trying to run the method that you're attempting to code at that point. What would you as the object, what information would you as the object need in order to work properly? So, for example, if you were a car, and someone was telling you, hey, car, add gas. Well, you would probably have a question, how much gas? And anytime you as the object have a question about um, a piece of information, then that's a parameter. And you should make that a parameter of your method. But it just takes practice. All right, let's look at the syntax. Here's a review of the syntax for method definition from the previous lesson. Um, and in this case, we're going to focus on that thing in the parentheses, the parameters in square brackets. So a couple of rules that are really important for parameters. Um, you should list each parameter separately inside the parentheses. You should separate them with a comma. You should make sure that each parameter, just like a variable, um, contains both a type and a name. And the rules for that are exactly the same as they are for all the variables that you've been creating up to this point. So let's just take a look at a couple of examples. Um, here we have a method called burn that takes no parameters, and that means that the parentheses should be empty. Um, we have a method called deposit, which takes one parameter. And like I just said, the uh, syntax for the parameter should be exactly the same as if you were creating that variable inside your program. Um, we have a type, double, and a name, amount. Uh, and here's another example of a method which has two parameters in it and notice that they are separated by a comma. And notice that each parameter has its own type. Even if we had two int parameters, we would still have to say int parameter one, comma, int parameter two. Each parameter needs its own definition. 
As far as what you do when you have parameters in your methods, um, you can use them uh, just like any other variable as if you had created them inside your method. Um, they can do all of the same things that any variable of that type could normally do. Um, the last note here is just a little design note for you. Try to avoid naming your parameters the same thing as the name of a class variable. So if you have a class variable called amount, don't use a variable uh, parameter named amount because then you'll get into some sort of messy name conflicts that you don't want to deal with. Just pick a different um, parameter name. You call it the amount or user's amount or anything else that tells you that it's different from your class variable. Of course, if you're naming your class variable starting with my, like I've been suggesting you do, you won't have this problem. Okay, last thing before we, oops, sorry. Let's take a look at an example here of how we use parameters inside of a method. So here's that deposit method we were looking at before. And notice that inside of the curly braces, I've taken my parameter, AMT, and I've added it to my class variable called my balance. So we can use parameter variables just as if we had created them inside of our method. The only difference is that those values happen to be coming from outside of the method. Okay, now the last thing. The last thing has to do with how we document our parameters. And we've already talked about how important it is to write javadoc comments for the top of our classes. And we've also talked about how you need to write a javadoc comment for our class variables. And we've also talked about how you need to write a one-line description using a javadoc comment for each one of your methods. And now I'm here to tell you that you also have to write a one-line comment for each parameter um, that you use in a method. And that extra line goes inside the comments for the method. Uh, and you have to use a special tag called at param. So you see an example here, the syntax for at param is at param, name of the variable, at param, space, name of the variable, space, and then one line of description about the variable. Everything that you put on the rest of that line is gonna show up as the description for the variable. Make sure that you spell variable name exactly correctly, if it doesn't match what's in the parentheses for the method, then it won't work. Okay, really quickly let's take a look at an example in JGrasp, talking about all of this stuff. So we've returned to our student class from the previous lesson, and now we're going to take a look at how to add a method that takes parameters. So maybe I want to have just a simple method that can um, change the name of my student after I've already created it. So it's going to be a void method since it doesn't return anything. We'll call it set name. And then inside the parentheses, if I was to tell a student, hey, student, change your name, the student would probably say, okay, to what? So that what is going to be our parameter. So we're going to call that string name. And inside our parentheses, we're going to take that parameter and we're going to assign it to our class variable. So my name gets name, and we're done. But the last thing we have to do, or in some cases the first thing, I like to write my comments first, but just to stick with the order of the slides. We're going to write a comment, so changes the person's name, and then here's the important thing. At param, name of the parameter, and then a description, the new name. Okay. Let me show you what that does, by the way, just in case you're curious. So if we compile our program, and then we click on the Show Documentation button, notice that, it'll fire up our web browser, and notice that if we click on the method detail, check out what happened to our at param tag. It got turned into the parameter section of the method detail of our method. Okay, getting back to our program, we go back down to our main method. Just so to prove that it works, we will say roger.setName, the awesome Roger. And then we'll print out Roger again. Okay, so let's compile and run that. And now you'll see that originally there was no name because we used the default constructor. And then we called set name to the awesome Roger. Okay, so we talked about how to create parameters in this lesson. We talked about the difference between using parameters and using user input. And we also talked about the importance of using at param when we write comments for our parameters inside of our method uh, comment. So there you go. You're all set.